Hello, it's James from X Robots. It's part 24 of the exosuit build. So we've done quite a lot already, making it walk and so on. Last time I built the mechanical assembly for these arms, and today we're going to put motors in them and hopefully get them working a little bit. The plan is to reuse some of the gears from the Mark 1 exosuit, and for that one I use these brushes in runners, which are much faster, lower torque motors and lots of gearing. And that gearing pulled cords that went around blocks of tackles to amplify that force even more. So I'm going to be stripping the gears out and rebuilding these gearboxes because they're pretty chunky. So we're probably just going to go down to two gears, one that turns the pulley, the intermediate gear, and a motor running on that with a belt. And we're going to fit those on the arms, pull the cords, use blocks and tackles again, and try and use these as tendons basically to pull the arms around. So I've made this little test rig that's got the gears uh, fitted there on a 3D print, and we're going to try and build that in, or something very similar, into the arm here. So we're going to have uh, something like that on the bicep, that can then pull a pulley up the arm and back down to lift up the actual bottom of the arm here. And we're gonna put one on the back of the arm as well, and that's gonna pull the shoulder out here. So we've got that mechanism. So that means I can lean forward and pull back with force, and I can also do basically a bicep curl, and that'll have motors on. This joint here, however, is gonna be passive for now. Now it struck me that we could have some sort of cam that rotates and sticks out to block this into a certain position, so I can lift outwards. But for now, it's just basically gonna be uh, free to move there. So effectively, I can lean right forward with my arm there. I can lift something up. I can pull towards me, but actually lifting out is gonna be really hard. But there's not too many things I actually want to lift up this high, and it'll probably overbalance me anyway. So here's my redesigned gearbox, which is built around two bits of 2020 extrusion, which are shown in green. We've got our big gear with a pulley on that's gonna run between bearings in that recess and in that recess. And then the other gear runs just on some 4mm steel, which goes through that hole just there. So hopefully that gear will run between that recess and that recess. It's all pretty tight, but I don't want to make this thing too big. And that gear is also double braced between the other hole here. So hopefully that should all fit and it should still allow the arm to bend. So I'm going to print those parts and see how it is. Here are the pieces. I've stripped out some gears from the other gearboxes, so let's get assembling. So that's one side in, and this piece should go in there and rotate on the bearing, and obviously the other piece goes on the back, and I just need to be careful I get this at the right spacing so that this doesn't hit anything when the arm bends. So this probably needs to move up a bit, but that's no problem because it's all screwed into these slots. Now I've got this piece in here that holds the 4mm stainless steel, and that allows this gear to go on so that it meshes with that one. And then we've just got the piece to go on the outside, which looks like this, that holds the other ends. Okay, so one of those is together, so uh, they seem to run okay in the end. Obviously we need the motor on this side to drive this gear, to drive this gear, to drive the pulley. So both my arm gearboxes are in, so now it's time to do something around the back. And that gearbox looks like this. This time it's just two pieces that bolt straight onto the aluminium extrusion and the gears sit in the middle. Again, we've got space for our bushing there to put our bearing in. I've mounted those gearboxes on the back of the arms so they can pull this piece. Obviously mounting them in this massive hole here would have been better if I'd thought it through. But there we go, there isn't quite enough space unfortunately, even though that was the plan. So now I've just got to make a mounting for this motor. Obviously the back is easy because it can go onto the 2020 extrusion and I can slide it up and down to tension it. The outside of the arm's a bit harder, it's going to have to sit like this on the outside with a bracket. Obviously if I planned this properly we could have had the thing mounting through from the other side and tensioning up and down on the aluminium that's holding it, but there we go. Right, here are my two motor mounts. This one is made from two 3D prints, one with the grain of the print going that way and the other one with the build lines going that way so that it's nice and strong to grip the motor. The other one is one piece and that one is gonna get glued on and this one is gonna get mounted on the 2020. So there's one motor mounted on the back on the 2020 so I can tension it up and down and that seems to work pretty well to turn those gears. 
There's the other one, which is just glued on here for now, and that seems to work pretty well as well. If I can find that gear, that seems to run pretty smoothly. All my motors are installed and the gearbox is run, so now it's time to do something with these pulleys to make blocks and tackles. So I've got loads of these nylon pulleys already printed, and everyone's got a bearing in the middle, and those are fitted onto 6mm studding. And basically the idea is we have some cord, which goes around and around and around them, and that means basically you have to pull up six lengths of cords to pull these together. Uh, by the distance you normally pull one length, and that basically gears things down even further. So we've got the block and tackling the 3D printed thing on the back there by the gearbox, and one on the top here, so these can pull together, and that will pull the shoulder up and down. Obviously this piece of bungee will go eventually, that's just holding the arm at the moment, because there's nothing else to hold it. Lower down on the bicep, I've got one here, another block and tackle set, and the other side is there, so that pulley is going to pull up there and round and round a lot of times, and that will give me the bicep lift. Right, it's all strung up. I've used purple paracord for now. It's got a bit of stretch in it, but obviously you're only pulling one joint, so that stretch will get taken up in the gearbox anyway. So let's put some drivers on here, and we're just going to give those joints a test under power. So I'm just using one of the car ESCs I used in the Mark 1 Exo suit. There's a 45 amp Hobby King ESC with Ford and Reverse. I've got a radio control set, which I'm just using to drive the motor for now, and an 11.1 volt LiPo. So uh, let's just give that bicep a go. It definitely moves quick enough anyway. So that should definitely be agile enough. I'm not sure how much load it's going to lift. It feels pretty good. So uh, I have to really see when I've got some means of controlling it and we can actually do a proper test. So I've just moved the battery onto the back motor and I've got another motor driver. So now I can drive this joint here. So I'll be holding the arm, of course, and that allows me to lean that shoulder piece forward there so that I can actually lean forward to grab hold of things. And you'll notice we've got quite an interesting relationship between this passive joint um, and this crank here. So it's possible we can actually use this to control that motor. So as I lean forward, if I can move this the right way, the other way, the two are related as well as having some manual control to pull back and pulling that motor back to pull towards me. So one thing I mentioned last time was I wanted to be able to move my arms freely when I'm walking along without the actual power on so that I can move my arms and I can walk like a normal person, then I can turn the power on when I need to actually pull something. So I can kind of do that with this motion. However, if I bend my bicep, then obviously all these strings go slack and uh, probably the strings will fall off the rollers and that's terrible. So what we're probably going to do is put a tension tester thing on the string and that's going to pull up the string when I do this and the string goes slack. So that can just sit on here where the string goes to the motor and it can measure whether the string is slack and if I'm moving my bicep so it is slack, then it can just run the motor up to take the string up. The other thing we could do is put a spring or a tension on the other end of the string that would allow this to be pulled up here and that would take up the slack when I move my bicep up to save all the strings falling off and obviously when you apply force and you pull down on this, this string or uh, tensioner spring would stretch and then the force would get applied through the tight strings. Similarly, we could do that with this other axis. So we could have um, this tall tower here, we could have another pulley on a spring that pulls down and that could pull down this string via another pulley, so that would also take up the slack if I wanted to move that axis manually. So what I think I'm going to do is have basically one sensor in the hand, which is a handle I can push up or down, and that senses force, so when I push down of course against the tight strings here, the motor will unwind so I can put the bicep down, as well as being able to push up to apply force when I'm lifting a weight, we'll have the string tensioner, so that if I just move passively this joint up, it takes up the slack, and of course pushing down again will be against tight strings. For the back motor, we're going to do power assist based on this passive joint. So as I reach forward, effectively that motor unwinds and winds up, and that gives me power assist for pulling things towards me or reaching forward, and that's going to be pretty much automatic. So that makes the hand controls much simpler, and that'll allow me a trigger for activating big mechanical hands, which will come later. So that's all for this episode. Next time I'm going to be building that control system and also some handles so I've got something to hold on here. And at that point I'll be able to control the arms instead of them swinging around wildly. And I'll be able to get back in the suit to check that I can actually walk along, but I'm pretty confident that I can. So don't forget to check back for more updates on this project and the other projects. And it's also really important to say that a lot of my projects, the main build videos, are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live stream with me and all my videos early and various other rewards. So check that page out. All right, that's all for now.